Team News first of all. Team News is um, everyone that played in the last game is available at the moment, so Southampton. Um, so we're in good shape in terms of injuries. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. In terms of where your squad is at at the moment, um, how likely is it that what starts on Monday will be what you'll have in a month's time? There's a possibility of changes in. Um, we're still looking at possibly recruiting one or two people. Um, and we're well aware that the window is open and, and things could, could change slightly, but I don't think there'll be wholesale changes. There could be one or two. Where do you see Watford in terms of the pecking order of being favourites or second <laughs> third favourites to go up? I mean, you know, know. having been relegated with parachute payments, yeah. successful manager, a largely unchanged squad, I mean, should I be investing fortunes? I don't think it's for me to say, I'm just going to concentrate on us. And I'm, I'm well aware that there's a lot of strong teams in the league. I hope we're going to be competitive. I expect us to be competitive, but it's not for me to say whether we're first, second, third or anything like that. I've um, got a lot of respect for a lot of the clubs that are in this league. Some very good coaches and managers that we're going to be up against as well. So I'm going to concentrate on us. I expect us to be competitive. Morning. Morning. Oh, where can you work? <laughs> um, Rob, you came into the club, your appointment was announced late last season, so you now well acquainted with the place. Um, I was at the Elton John concert on the Sunday night, I think you were at as well. Good night. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great night. Um, Elton mentioned you as well, as you noticed, that he did, uh, he did say something about what he'd like to see the team do uh, this coming season. He was, he was asking for more passion. Can we expect to see that now? Because uh, I don't, don't think we saw a lot last season. I don't want to comment on last season, but what I want to um, what I want to talk about and going forward now is is focusing on us and the future and and the next game. And of course, I want to see I want to see a team that plays with passion, with with energy, with commitment, with bravery. Uh, those are the words that I've used a lot, and those are things that we talk about a lot at the training ground on a daily basis. Um, I thought I thought Elton's speech was was excellent. It's something that we could play before before the game for the lads as well, um, because it certainly got me up for it as well. But he's right, because if we want a connection as well, we do want a connection with our supporters, with our fans. Um, the very least they want to see is that, that desire, that passion, that, that will to, to fight. And that's something that we'll talk about a lot. Um, I think our, our fans have got their heads screwed on, they'll forgive mistakes. But if they see reactions and they see people trying really, really hard and giving everything, then then they'll give us more time as well. Um, so yeah, that's something that we'll uh, we, we've talked about from day one, to be honest. Um, you know, passion's been traditionally connected with what with the small team generally up against it. You know, never taking the back and step. But his passion is that a bit of an old-fashioned concept now in the days of endless video analysis, uh, special menus. You know, players are way they, they tested. Is there still a place for passion? Of course there is. That's, it's, it's football, it's a team sport, it's played with emotion. And we want to see emotion. I want to see a team that, that, that plays with that as well. And, and, and so, again, so do, so do you guys, so do the fans. Of course we want to be organised. There's a lot more that we know now off the pitch, science, and like you said, whether it's food, whatever it could be, uh, analysis, that, you know, we can go into a lot more detail. But ultimately, in the end, the game is very, very similar to what it's always been. And if you run really hard and you and you play with that fight, desire, and passion, then you know that's more than half the battle. And the last one for me: every season, everybody says the championship is harder than last season. You can see why. You know the prize for going up gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the as the Premier League money goes up and up. Is it true to say that? I mean, looking at this season, do you think it's going to be harder than ever? I think it's always difficult. I wouldn't say it's going to be harder than ever. It's just going to be a challenge, and every game. Will be a, will be a, bring different challenges, and I'll say that a lot this season. Um, so I'm expecting it to be tough um, for us, but also for anyone who's playing us as well. Uh, you know, that's that's what I see. But I think it's going to be competitive. I think it'll be exciting to watch. I think it's one of the best leagues in the world, isn't it? Of course, there's a weight of expectation of Watford. You've already mentioned parachute money down after one season in the Premier. Do you feel that as a an incentive or as a burden? Something I, I'm really looking forward to. First of all, this, this 
opportunity that we've got now, and I say we've got myself, the staff, and the players. We've got an opportunity now to to start a real journey because okay, things didn't go great last season. Forget that. Forget it. It's done. Let's move on and concentrate on the here and the now and, and be in the present right now. So I'm really looking forward to it. And um, you know, we've got a few more days to wait. We'll see, it starts tonight. In some, you know, in, in in some cases, starts tomorrow as well for a lot of others. But I wish it was starting tonight for us as well. But we've got a few more days to wait. I'm really looking forward to it. And last one. Did it cross your mind when you came in that managers traditionally have a short tenure at Watford? Because I think you, the club really, a lot of people looking at the club think this needs to be a long rebuilding program. We want to go on a journey together, like we've said, and um, I'm well aware of the club's recent history. Um, but let's look at it as well. There's been successful times over, over over this last decade or so as well. You know, really successful times. But, um, but of course, I want to be here for the long term. I want to I want to help be a part of something. I want to help try and build something. I want to be here for a long time. I want the staff to be here for a long time. I want to build a connection with the supporters were the most important people at the club and um, and so far I've felt a lot of support around me from from everyone I feel a lot of goodwill towards us as well now ultimately I know it's down to results but that's the same at any football club no different so we'll work really really hard we've got everyone on board with us at the moment we're looking forward to it well thanks very much James well, you've made quite a big step up from managing me to, to a team that's just been relegated from the Premier League Is that Massive step adding pressure on the pressure you I assume you've already got having taken the job. You put pressure on yourself in any role that you're in. You know, when I was taking under 16s, uh, I, I put that pressure on myself as well because you want to work hard, you want to deliver, you want to do a good job. Um, so I don't feel any differently to what I did last season uh, with Forest Green. Um, I'm dealing with human beings, I'm working with um, some really good people and I've got a lot of help and support around me as well. So I don't actually feel any different. We'll try and do, um, uh, we've, got to, we've obviously got to do things slightly differently because it's different people, different human beings that I've got now, so we can't do everything exactly the same. But in terms of how we'll try and do things, nothing really changes. It doesn't matter what level you're working at. How has it been managing sports in for a while? Because I think a few players have left keep them in. It's just better to go around. How has it been managing? different types of characters Really good, great. Obviously some new bits for me as well because we do have um, a different mix of, of, of people from different parts of the world. But I've loved that side of it. Richie's enjoying learning Spanish. You know, he's been, been cracking on with his Spanish. He's learning a new phrase every day. I've got to try and brush up on mine. I've got to be honest, I'm, that's still got to improve. Um, but I think uh, it's, it's been great. The, the lads have really bought into what we're trying to do. They, they want to be together as well. They want to be successful as much as, as we do. And we know to do that, we have to be together as a group, all of us. And, um, and that's probably been our biggest focus so far in the pre-season. So it's been great to get to know the lads. It's been great to get to know them as, as people, as well as just out on the pitch. Um, and again, you know, it's five and a half, six weeks in so far. So it's still very, very early days. Um, but so far, yeah, so good. Final one for me, Emmanuel uh, Dennis and Yes. Yeah. Hi Rob. Um, just follow, following up from the question there about Sarah and, and Dennis, how how do you sort of manage that situation? Knowing you full well that they may well leave by by September the first. Do, do you do you just think, well, let's just use them for as long as we can and try and you know, get as much goodness out of them whilst they're here? I think while they're at this football club, Adam, we, um, they're very good players. They've worked extremely hard, been very professional, so of course we're going we're gonna to use them because A, they can help us um, and, um, and B, because they've worked extremely hard and been professional, you know, why, why wouldn't I? Now, I've said from day one, when we've been asked questions about, especially those two players, that it could be comings and goings. You know, I've been open about that. So we've got to be prepared for if they do move on. Um, so that's why we're doing our due diligence as well, as well away from um, 
you know, in terms of recruitment. But while, whilst they're here, and they've said to me as well, they're fully committed to it. Um, so you know, while they're here, that's it. We we, we use them and and uh, and they help the group. I suppose it's the it's just the nature of the piece, especially when teams drop down from the Premier League. That you'll have situations like this. But the most important thing, I suppose, is to have a core belief and strength within that group. And the things that I've seen from outside looking in, um, you know, things like the the fun stuff that you did in Austria, going on uh, kayaks and boats and stuff and having team meals and things like that what what other things have you been able to do to bring this group together because it has been it's been tough over the last few years to do that with covid and relegations and things like that it's probably the way i want to try and be as a person in a, in a leadership position if you like anyway so by having conversations giving people ownership um being honest with people in, in being inclusive um that's how we try to be on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, as we're, as we're around the training ground. So um, that's first and foremost, being respectful and being decent people. And that's, that's really important to me and that's important to us as a group now and everyone knows that. So that helps bring people together as well. And obviously the fun stuff is, is great, you know, we had a great barbecue, went kayaking, you know, and being together for five or six days always helps. It's, it's nice, we get to know each other a little bit. And, players, the lads begin to trust us and think, ah, oh, well, they're all right, they're with us. And, and that's what we are, we're in it together. And we keep saying that. But I think the stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, not changing, being consistent, those are the key things. And just a couple of sort of recruitment team questions. On, on the situation with Samir sort of effectively being one foot out of the, out of the door um, and not having a left-sided centre-back, <clears throat> in terms of a tactical side of things, does, that, does it really have a, a big impact or have you got, you know, you've got right footers that can step in and it's not going to hinder the operation too much, but the ideal is to <clears throat> get a left footer in as soon as possible? I said after the game against Southampton that with Samir's situation, we'll be, we're, we're looking into that. Um, I think in my ideal uh, vision, the way I see things, of course I would like balance all over the pitch and, and, and have um, to have that. So. That's something that we're looking at. But what I will say as well, you know, I was delighted with the game against Southampton with how the team looked as well. It's not the worst thing in the world if we don't have that uh, that left foot. But in terms of balance going forward for um, for the long term, it does help. And on which Mario Gaspar hasn't been announced yet. That's coming up. So how has he been? What is he like as a player? And is it? Can he be a like-for-like -like replacement, just a straight right wing back? Because he's not necessarily been doing that too much. He's more of a right back in a four, but presumably he's got that vast experience and he can slot him wherever you need him. Mario's been in for a couple of days now, and obviously I think you know announced that later on yeah. on today. Um, first of all, I mean he's a, an extremely experienced player, but at a good age, not like an old player here now, but very experienced at a top club in Europe. He's been captain of that football club as well. So I think he comes in and gives us a lot of help, first of all with leadership and knowledge and understanding. He's a good footballer, he's a good footballer. He's someone that can actually do both sides of it. As we know, wing backs are important to be able to defend and attack. He is different, but that's good because we want differences within the group as well because we're going to need different people in different games. Um, so he's not going to be a flying machine, but he's someone that's very intelligent and technically very good and wants to defend, but then can at the right times as well link and play with his, with his brain and his technique, so he's someone that will be able to help us for sure.